A powerful faith combination is believing the Word of God in your heart and speaking it with your mouth. Join Kenneth Copeland on The Believer's Voice of Victory as he explains how words are used to release power. Open your Bibles with me again tonight to the sixth chapter of the book of Matthew. Let's read from the beginning with the 24th verse, sixth chapter of Matthew. No man, say no man, no person can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot. This is Jesus talking. These are red words. Amen. Red words win. You can put them right up on top. No man can serve two masters. You cannot serve God and mammon or wealth. You can't. It can't be done. Yeah, you notice once Jesus made that statement, he Im- immediately began to talk about serving God. Because if you can't serve God and mammon, you ought to be smart enough to choose God. Because he's got a lot of mammon. (laughs) But it's righteous mammon. I don't know, Michael, is there there righteous mammon? I mean, can I say that? But you understand what I mean. He's got a lot of property. Amen. I want you to know Jesus of Nazareth is the smartest man you know. Oh, yeah. It will come maybe as a shock to some, but he's really smarter than you. (laughs) He's smarter than me. (laughs) He could turn 50 cents into a billion because he's smart Uh and he knows how. Amen. Amen. Now, and, and he, he was the one you remember that gave Joshua the, the uh, instructions, meditate in my word day and night. That's just about all time, isn't it? Yeah. Meditate in my, keep the word on your mind. Keep the word on your mind. Joshua was about to go, the la- go across a river, and the last time he was over there, there was a bunch of giants over there. So, He's wanting to remember what it was like the last time he was there, and God wouldn't allow it. No, 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 no. He said, uh-uh. No, I'm the giant here. You keep, you keep me on your mind. I'm the giant. They're the grasshoppers. You meditate in my word day and night, and you will be able to see. You will observe how to do all that's written therein, and you will prosper in all of your ways. Then the classic Amplified said, and you will deal wisely in the affairs of life. Hey, that's the key to living, is dealing wisely. Amen. 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 Making right decisions all the time. Now, therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on is not the life more than meat and the body more than just something to put clothes on. Behold the fowls of the air. They sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? Now, 
Now, take, take, a, take a notice of what he said. Which of you by taking thought can add 18 inches to your height? When you stop and think about it, that's kind of a stupid statement. But it can't be stupid because it came from Jesus. Huh? That's how ridiculous it is in the eyes of God for you to be worried about what you're going to eat and wear. That's as ridiculous as thinking you can add 18 inches to your height by thinking about it and worrying about it. I'm just too short. Oh, maybe I'll grow 18 inches if I worry about it long enough. <laughs> Amen. It is a stupid thought. Well, worrying about what you're going to eat and what you're going to wear is just as stupid. Because your heavenly father, well, I'm getting ahead of Jesus here. Let me, let me go back and, and uh, slow down here and catch up with him. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his statue? Why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the, clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying. Now, we spent some time on that last night. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on it, but it's, you know, he said, you of little faith. He's talking about faith here. And the basic fundamentals of faith, the, the first basic fundamental of faith is believe it in your heart and say it with your mouth. Now, if you'll check the Bible out, words are the most important thing on this planet. It was created by words. We live in a word-created, word-upheld environment. Amen. Words are important. What you say is important. What you don't say is important. Amen. Amen. Words are not primarily for communication. Words are primarily for power release. Amen. So words are very important. He's talking about faith here. Therefore, take no thought saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or with all, where with all shall we be clothed? Don't say that. That's a command. Don't say that. Do you hear me? Don't be saying that. For all these things do the Gentiles seek, for, their heavenly, for your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God. Jesus must be your only source. There's only one source, and you know his name. Now, there are, he uses different channels and methods, but there's only one source. For you and me, there's only one. So there's no use seeking a bunch of other things. Seek him. Amen. Seek the kingdom. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness or his right way of doing things. Amen. And all these things will be added to you. Amen. Amen. Now then, in the, in the Gospel of Luke, and we go to the 12th chapter. And let's read the 30th verse. 
For all these things do the nations of the world, or the Gentiles, seek after. And your Father knows that you have need of these things. Now, I want to touch something else right there. He, has no, he knows that you have need of all these things. That's why He put all these things in the covenant. They're in the covenant. All of it is in the covenant. They can, all of these things can be obtained through your covenant with God. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, amen. I don't know about you. I don't preach myself happy. I, I, I'm just, whew, glory to God. If I wasn't so busy, I'd, I'd run. Hallelujah. <laughs> but rather seek ye the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not. See, all that other stuff comes from fear. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. <laughs> That's shouting ground. We're owners. We're owners. Ownership is big in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Say, well, God owns everything. Yeah, he does. But where's your own heirs? I'm a joint heir. Amen. He has inherited and been raised from the dead and appointed heir of all things, and we're a joint heir. We are co-owners with Jesus of all th for all things. So why are you sweating out what you're going to eat and wear? <laughs> Amen. That, that'd be like somebody that, you know, is a, an heir to a huge clothing fortune and don't know where they're going to get anything to wear. Are you kidding me? Dumb, dumb. You own clothes. You understand? <laughs> Whoa. Now, we're not done yet. It gives your father good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Hallelujah. Now, I'll just slip back to the fourth chapter of the book of Mark. Now, somewhere along in here, you're going to have to get happy. <laughs> Verse 26. Well, before, before I read that, from the 14th verse on, the sower soweth the word, the parable of the sower sowing the word, there's only five things. that Satan has to steal the Word. Only five. That's right. Five things. And the first one is so successful he usually doesn't even have to mess with the other four. Becoming offended. <laughs> It'll cost you money. Because faith doesn't work in an unforgiving environment. But now, you go back and study these things and avoid these things, and you come down to this, this 20th verse, these are they which are sown on good ground. They, and, and all of these, this 25% here faced every situation all these others did. Sown on good ground, such as hear the Word, and receive it, and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundred. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. I'm pressing for that hundredfold category. Amen. Amen. But Amen. thirty's good. Sixty's better than that. Amen. On my way to a hundred. All the time. All the time. 
all the time, on my way to 100, all the time, all the time. I want to shoot for the moon, brother. Yes. Glory Amen. to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, notice what he said. Verse 26, so is the kingdom of God. Well, if we're going to be seeking first the kingdom of God and we found out that we own the kingdom of God, in other words, we live here. We live in the kingdom. The kingdom belongs to us and we belong to the kingdom. We are citizens of the, of the most high God's kingdom. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Then you come right on down and he said, look, so is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep and rise night and day. The seed should spring, up, spring and grow up. He knows not how. I want to inject something there. He doesn't know how, but he knows it's coming. There's where the failure has been in seeking first the kingdom. I just don't see any way he can get money to me. He can't. Amen, because you can't see it. But if you can see it in the Spirit, you can have it. Amen. When you, when you study and seek first the kingdom and it gets down on the inside of you, you, and you, you begin to realize, hey, this is backed in the blood of Jesus. This is a covenant statement here. And all the promises of God in Christ are yea and amen. It works, doesn't it, Si? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise God. He knows it's coming. A man casts seed into the ground, sleeps, rise, night and day. The seed should spring and grow up. It'll work. The seed knows what to do and the ground knows what to do. Now, if you'll stay out of its way, it'll grow up. <laughs> Instead of getting up in the middle of the night and take your flashlight and go outside and dig the seed up and see if it's growing. Now, hey, that may be the answer to how dumb can you get, but that's what people do in the spirit realm. Sow the seed and then worry about it. Why isn't it working? Why isn't it working? I don't know why it isn't working. Why isn't it working? Because you keep saying it isn't working. That's right. Come on. And your, the words of your mouth are like a threshing tool. And every time you say it isn't working, it, that you just license the devil to go tear it up. Amen. If he can steal the word, he can have your goods. Now, for the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself. See, the earth is doing its job. First the blade, then the ear. After that, the full corn in the ear. But when the fruit, fruit is brought forth, immediately he putteth in the sickle, because the harvest is come. Hallelujah. Harvest time is the most, it's the hardest work of any time of the year, and it's more fun than any time of the year. Glory to God. Harvest time is wonderful. And he said, whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what comparison shall we compare it? It's like a grain of mustard seed, which when it is sown in the earth is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. But when it's sown, it grows up and becomes. It grows up and becomes. I want you to get that. It grows up and becomes greater than all the herbs and shooteth out great branches so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The kingdom of God. The whole thing, all of this creation, the entire environment in which we live, is, can all be said in these few words, seed, time, and harvest. 
You remember the prodigal son? You remember the scripture said when times got hard, you remember he took everything he, he had, took all, all, all of his inheritance and, and left town with it. And one little line in there it is, <laughs> it is so important in the kingdom. It said, you know, I mean, he went completely broken and he's hungry. And it said, and no man gave to him. That's just kind of stuck in there. Yeah. You know why he went completely broke and no one gave to him? He gave to no one. He sowed no seed except seeds of destruction. So he got a harvest, big one, big harvest of destruction. Amen. But it came time to get up and go home. And when he got home, oh, his dad was so glad to see him. And you have to remember now, he came right out of a pigsty to get there. And the first thing he did was kiss him. Shoo, shoo, shoo. <laughs> Pig stink all over this kid. And, and you know, that, that's, that's not just, that's really not thrilling in a, in a uh, good Hebrew home anyway. <laughs> to be covenant to a pig farmer. That's just exactly the, the picture of born again, particularly Holy Ghost baptized tongue talking Christians. to covenant with the Babylonian system and spend all their time worried about what they're going to eat, drink, and wear, put on their body. It smells of a bad covenant. It, ha it, has, it stinks in the nostrils of God because He's given you the kingdom. He's given you the whole thing. Therefore, take no thought saying. The first basic fundamental of faith is believe it in your heart and say it with your mouth. Whenever Ken and I talk about living by faith, I know there are people who think, oh, that's easy for you. You're preachers. You have it made. And in some ways we do. But we have it made because our calling demands that we give God our attention. And giving God our attention is what always brings success to us, and it'll always bring success to you in whatever endeavor you're in. But we haven't always lived that way. Right after we got married, we were broke, flat broke, unemployed, deeply in debt, no furniture, no house, no nothing. Then one day, I picked up a Bible that Ken's mother had given him some years before. In the front, she had written this, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these other things shall be added unto you. Well, I needed a lot of things added unto me. And I began to read that. First time I'd ever written a modern translation that was easier than the King James. So for the first time in my life, I got it into my heart that God cared. I saw where He cared for the birds. I thought, if God cares for birds, He cares for me. I got a revelation, hallelujah. I was born again, and two weeks later, Ken was born again, and we've been on this wonderful traveling road with Jesus ever since. Don't worry if you don't have it made. We certainly didn't when we started. Just make a decision to seek Him first, and then all these other things the Scripture says will be added unto you. What you've said up to this point is what brought you to right now. When Gloria Copeland learned that to change her life for the better, her words needed to change from negativity to saying what God's Word says. It became the key to her walk of faith. Brand new to the KCM Library is Put Your Words to Work, a 31-day faith project by Gloria Copeland. This is a 31-day plan to help you change the habit of speaking wrong words. And the Lord will help you. In consistency lies the power for your victory. If you want a change in your life, you have to make a change, 
and your words are the best place to start. Your words of faith contain the power to set the course of your life. To release faith, we have to have confidence that our words will come to pass. So make a commitment to yourself and to God to read each day's message and act on it. Agree that you will only speak the words in faith that you want to come to pass and see real change for the better. There is faith for every season of life. Request your free copy of Gloria Copeland's new book, Put Your Words to Work, a 31-day faith project. Call 800-600-7395 or go to our website, kcm.org slash TV special. Develop a lifestyle of faith. Learn how to put your faith to work. Speak God's word and change your future. Request your free devotional from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Offer good for 60 days. I hope you caught what Brother Copeland said to you today. He said, your words are for power release. Let me ask you, are you paying attention to the words that are coming out of your mouth? How are you using your words? Are you using them to create or to destroy, to build up or to tear down? Now, listen, I know it can take some training to get our words lined up with what God is saying. And if you've said some things that don't match his word, don't get condemned. We've all done that. But ask the Holy Spirit to help you recognize it. Just say this, just pray this prayer. Put a guard over my mouth, O Lord, and he'll do it. He'll help you recognize it. And the Holy Spirit in you will help you begin to take action to change what you're saying. How do you do this? You start by planting the word of God in your heart. You sow it in your heart. Jesus said, up out of your heart, your mouth's going to speak. So soon the word that you sowed in your heart is going to be coming out of your mouth in faith. And that's the very reason we offer these things to you. And we want to help you with this by offering you this book by Gloria Copeland called Put Your Words to Work. It's a 31-day faith project devotional. Now, what you do is you read a message every day. You get your mind on the things of God. You meditate the truth of the Word of God, and you begin to change the habit of wrong words. And I'm telling you, this life is about the habits you make and the habits you break. And putting the Word of God in your life and, and developing the habit of speaking His Word, this is a habit you want to make a part of your life. So to request your free copy of this book, just go to kcm.org. Let us know you want it, and we'll get it right out to you. Don't miss next Sunday's message. You're going to be learning from Brother Copeland, my grandfather, about how we actually activate our faith by taking action. Faith without works is dead. We look forward to seeing you again then. Until then, remember this. God loves you and we love you. And Jesus is Lord. The Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast is available free on DVD, CD, or digital download. Request your copy on our website, kcm.org. Shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information.